allergy. They're acting up and I don't even have allergies. What's happening? Oh boy. Uh, hey y'all, welcome back to Adventuring with Amanda. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Y'all, um, sometimes it can be very hard to step out of your comfort zone. I've been doing van life for almost four years and there are certain places in different cities, national forests, BLM land that I really like going to, but every now and then you need to find a different spot, right? Um, or if you're going to a new area, you need to be able to find a campsite. This can be very overwhelming and challenging and a really anxiety inducing task for a lot of people. I find it especially difficult to find really great new campsites, particularly in National Forest, because I like solitude and I like being far away from other people, especially for the safety of Winston. So in this video, I'm going to be scouting out some new spots because I'm staying right now at my mom's house in Payson, but it's only 15 minutes away from where I like to camp. The unfortunate part is where I like to typically camp, um, it's just not as great. They cut down a bunch of trees, a bunch of campsites are trashed, They, the forest, um, or whoever, I guess the forest service probably created a bunch of ditches to, so people can't get into certain campsites. So I'm going to look for some new areas and it can be difficult due to the fact that I need good cell service and I like my solitude. Let's see what we can find. Um, before we do that, I need to go to the gas station and clean off my windshield because y'all aren't going to be able to see anything. So let's get to it. Well, that was bust. The Circle K literally has no water or fluid, liquid in any of their windshield washing stations. That's cute. So I ended up having to go to Chevron down the street since I couldn't do my windshield at Circle K. So I figured since I had to go further toward town, because I'm, I'm in Payson right now, sitting in the Bashes parking lot, um, I needed to just get one gallon of Primo water, so I did that here. There's a Primo water station right between the Bashes and the Dollar Tree. And then I needed to go to Harbor Freight to get some new tent stakes because like two of mine, one got bent, one, the little orange thing broke off of it. So I was like, I'm going to go get some tent stakes. And so I did, and I know that Todd has been needing... Um, the heavy duty tent stakes. So I bought him a pack as well because they were literally on sale for $3. And it's like the, um, the 10 inch steel ones, like super heavy duty, three bucks at Harbor Freight today. Like literally, yes, please. So now we can go scout out some campsites and it's Saturday. Whew, my hair's acting wild. It's Saturday. So I know that the good campsites are probably going to be taken, especially because it's in the 90s in the valley this weekend, so I bet a lot of people came up north. But that's okay if the campsites are taken. I'm not looking to to like camp today. So um, I want to camp tomorrow, and if for some reason I still can't find a spot, I can wait till Monday because I can just stay at my mom's house. So I'm going to go scout. The two apps that I use to find campsites are iOverlander and Campendium. They are both reliable, and I've been using iOverlander a lot more lately because I've been finding more spots on it. So iOverlander, Campendium, and then what I like to do is use those as a general spot to go to and just kind of navigate. You can go on Google Maps and look at the satellite maps. And I recommend just going to a spot and like 
going through the dirt roads, the forest roads, whatever, and just keeping your eyes peeled for a spot. Now, the nice thing about being in a minivan is I can fit in a lot of spaces that big trailers and huge rigs can't fit. So that gives me the advantage, even though I have some uh, very specific parameters set for myself when looking for a spot. So let's get driving. Okay, y'all, so I just got to this forest road. This is new to me. I have my GPS up. It kind of looks like that little hill I just passed would have been a campsite, but what I'm gonna do is just traverse it and see what is around. And when I find something, I think I'll go this way first. When I find something, if anything, I will do a speed test to see if I have enough download to watch some shows, see how my upload is to get videos up, and take it from there. This is a pretty smooth road, so. There's a specific pin that I am following, so I will take the road there but on my way, I'm seeing if there's any other options. The road has been just a little bit rutted, but nothing too crazy. Just kind of got to go around to go slow. Um, I'm pulling up to, it looks like some sort of like roundabout. And there's some fencing over here and signs. I'm just checking it out. Not sure if this is private property or what this is. Oh yeah, it says camping prohibited. The area is, this area is within one quarter mile from water. So camping prohibited. Okay. So, and you know, that's really part of the fun and the scouting is, you know, you have to be open to just doing some exploring looking out for the signs, looking out for different roads and turns. And now we can kind of move on here. There was a little bit of water, but nothing crazy. What does it say? So 371 is this way. It looks like I can go either way. I'm going to go this way. Um, this looks like it would be very muddy if it was wet, but it's not, and should be no big deal with my minivan, just gotta go slow. peasy. Good job, Dodge Grand Caravan. We're getting kind of far back here, though, so I'm not sure how cell service will be, but we're about to find out. All right, I just found, I think, quite a bit of open camping. Um, the roads are very bad. <clears throat> oh, here's a little bit of water. The other nice thing is that even when there's water and stuff, I, I'm so small that I can often go around it. Ooh, I'm oh, I'm scraping. Those are bushes. Everything's fine, y'all. So this is great. Ooh, all my stuff's shaking. It's okay, y'all. It's, it's fine, y'all. <laughs> okay, this is a great little campsite over here. There's nobody over here. Um... Let me just kind of back up here. Actually, this would be a great spot for me and kiddo. You know, and when I'm finding spots too, I'm like, okay, if I'm ha having people camp with me, right? I'm inviting people. It's like, would their rigs be able to get into these spots that I could get into? Um, yeah, so this would be very muddy and very icky. 
but it's dry enough to where nobody's gonna sink so this is good I'm going to just stop filming and do a speed test I'm actually shocked I just found a ton of camping and nobody's here um, I'm very surprised and I just ran a speed test and I have like 45 down and 10 up which is fast it's like more than enough to watch shows and get videos uploaded so what I do when I find a spot like this is I'm gonna save it on my Google Maps for myself and since I know the cell service is good at this particular location I can drive around a little bit more to scout out some other spots in case like I come back in a couple days and this one is taken but this would be an awesome spot for me and friends honestly so we will continue on while Winston snoozes and does not supervise Okay, so we're at our second scouting location. This would automatically be like a second choice because it's much further from town, about 25 minutes. It, but it is a little higher elevation. It's about 5,700 feet instead of 5,300. I know there are trailheads up here Oof, so I need to traverse this road for about a mile and a half. I've seen some other campers. Ooh, I do see a trailer up there. Um, this road has been super rocky and kind of a pain in the ass, I'm not even gonna lie. So I don't really know how interested I am in going further. It's not really giving me the vibe that the other place was, but I'm here and the point is to check it out, right? So I haven't even stopped to do a speed test anywhere. I'm gonna go up about another half a mile and see kind of what the deal is. Well, that could be a good campsite down there. How's the road? Ooh, I don't know, that'd be iffy. I see some good campsites down there, but that would be iffy to get to. So the cell service here at the second location is surprisingly incredible. But there isn't, there's not a ton of camping. now. The reason why I even came to check this out was because I overlander said that it had good Verizon service and that's what I have. And that person was not lying because it is phenomenal. Oh, this could be a camp spot. Yeah, so there are some spots. The other thing though too about these campsites over here is they are so not level. And I prefer level spots because although I have levelers, I don't really want, I don't like to use them if I don't have to, especially because I like to go into town every few days and to just come back and have to get back on your levelers and like be perfect. It's kind of a pain, but this is a good backup spot. I know it's good service now, so it's an option, but if I can stick with that first place, that would be ideal. I just got back to my mom's after our scouting mission. Winston and I drove for about an hour and a half and I'm pleased because that first location I went to has a ton of great campsites 
and that second location I went to is a good backup and of course I have the area that I go most of the time but I'm trying to avoid that I want to do new things and have an abundance of options so just remember to use iOverlander, Campendium, those are my two favorites. Of course, Google Maps is helpful, especially to look at like the satellite terrain, because when you're in National Forest, you can often see in the trees where there are campsites. So that is very helpful. But I hope that overall this video was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And Winston and I will see you next time.